So yeah. What's up, buddy? How you doing, bud? I'm good, man. Just uh, doing a late night. Fucking got nothing going on. Fucking just decided to see if I can connect with people. You're doing a live diary. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. You you're doing a live diary about becoming a father. I it wasn't it didn't start off that way. It was just the topic was brought up and just be, being open and honest about it. Just uh, I don't know the the excitement about it, the the nervousness about it, and just like the how life is. Just I don't know. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. There's a little nervous for for a minute. I was working on a bit about not being nervous, but I think it like it finally hit me either in the last week or two because I went to go to my fiance's like 20th week ultrasound and like this to actually see like the ultrasound shit happening and like seeing the like the, the kid move and seeing the limbs and seeing like i'm just like holy shit it's it's here it's so, happening yeah it's happening so not that um like i don't, like, I'm, I'm nervous because like I'm, I'm like i'm not like, nervous as like oh am i gonna fuck up am i like am i gonna do this am i gonna do that i'm nervous just to like see how this affects life like uh, your life or everything. Like uh, not like I mean, I, it sounds kind of selfish if it was gonna affect my life. I already know my life's gonna change as soon as the kid gets here. Right. Uh, and then like, and I'm also curious to see how. Like it's already motivating me to work even harder now before the kid kid gets here, but I'm curious to see how much more it drives me to work even harder. And at the same time, how it affects me to uh, continue to create at the rate that I'm creating at. I don't want you to lose the ability to create because you enjoy creating. A I child, love- a child will make you change how you. It can. It doesn't work. It doesn't happen for everybody. But you can change how you go about creating because you'll create from a place of survival. Yeah. I got to make money. I got to provide. And then it loses a little. It loses something. I don't know exactly what it is, but it loses something. You can, you know, comes and goes. Do you do you feel that th- that new mindset takes away from the creativity? Because it now forces you to be like in a mindset of like, oh, shit, like I need to do this for the sake of like sort of, every day. Yeah, it's like what you for for everything and like as opposed to for the sake okay every day okay and then you know being in the profession that we're in when it comes to comedy and trying to get booked on shows and trying to work the passion that you had to do what you wanted to do is now substituted with i got to do this yeah. Because I got to survive. I have to provide. I have to put food on the table. Because when you have a child, you're basically saying, I can take care of you and this baby and us, and we'll be okay. Yeah. And, and then you'll start to drink and get stressed out and do drugs and shit like that. I, I, I plan on uh, doing a lot of heroin, so. I mean, look, look it's, a, it's a sleepy drug, so be careful. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You know, I got to be awake. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I- you don't want to nod off while you're holding your baby and then you just like <laughs> strung out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't think you're gonna I think you're gonna do a wonderful job because there's nothing bad about you from pretty- what from what I from our interactions, from our conversations, our exchange. Um you you want to do good. I mean, you know what? Like my ma- my my agent, when the Black Lives Matter stuff was happening, and he came to me, he was like, "How can I teach my daughter to be a better person? Like, how can I raise my daughter so she won't grow up to hate and stuff like that? Like, what can I do?" And I just basically told him, "Treat, treat tell your daughter to treat everybody the same." Yeah. Like, don't say, hey, this person has been through something. We got to do a better, we got to treat them special because they've been through something. Just treat everybody like a person. With empathy. 
It's a lot of comics with kids, man. There's a lot of comics out here. Uh, like, sorry. Oh, sorry. Fuck, my bad. I'm, I'm going to ignore him Facebook check, but my bad, guys. I'm having a pretty dope conversation over on Instagram. So. Sorry, Facebook people. Yeah. Um, just be patient. Yeah. Be patient. Have understanding that this is your first time doing it. This is your girl's first time doing it. The child didn't ask to be here. Yeah. You know, it didn't. It didn't say, "Yo, let me in. <laughs> let me get out. You no, know, let me get out them balls. I gotta get out of here. I got stuff to do." Um, try to have fun with it. I agree with that. I agree with all those things. Yeah. Try my, to have fun. It's for you. Like my fiance is black, so I'm like getting ready to bring a black child into the world. Not so, <laughs> so like that that's just like uh, you know growing up like you have certain privileges like you know it wasn't until i started uh being with my my fiance that i started like seeing things from her perspective right you know for for example like uh like how much representation matters like the reason she became an actress was because like she didn't see many people of her the color on on film and television right so like, that inspired her and so like little stuff like that makes me feel like it's like okay and especially with all the whole black lives matter thing and like uh just it, it's just like one of those things where, where it's like how like not that i'm nervous not that i'm scared but it's just i, I want to do right by the kid you uh, get you know a lot of i know some people that try to take this mindset of I, i'm not gonna let it dictate my life and, that, and that's fine and that's great and i understand it and it's cool to see you know what i mean to some to have someone have that mindset of like I'm not gonna allow something to stop me from enjoying my child. I'm not gonna let something stop me from enjoying life. I'm not gonna let something stop me from, you know, giving this child everything I wanted to have. You know, but at the same time, you can't be oblivious and say, like this. Thing I, I don't. No one's gonna see my child for their color. They're just gonna see a human being, and that's that's great, but. Until they manufacture um, those invisibility cloaks they gave uh, Harry Potter, can't hide from who you are. Yeah. You know, I can't hide my face when I go out in public or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of undoing and a lot of unlearning needs to be done for everybody. Yeah. But... You and you and you. I think I like the state of Washington. I think Seattle is a dope place. Um, it's a foodie town. It's an artsy town. Like they're really into live art and you know theater and comedy. I mean, you're in a good area. You know, you can. You know, you you have just have fun, dude. Like yeah. just have fun. Like just don't break the baby. <laughs> just don't cause any trauma. Yeah, no. yeah. Just don't cause any trauma. Don't drop it. You know. Make sure your doors are locked when you and your girl are making out so they don't get scarred for life and walk in the room and be like, what the fuck is going <laughs> And then 20 years from now, they're talking to a therapist about Yeah, that. like, and I walked in and my mom and dad, she was doing, like, you don't want to do that. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Um, give your child the opportunity to figure out who they want to be. Yeah. You know, in the sense of, Figure out what you want. Like, don't say you gotta go to school. You gotta do this. You gotta. You gotta. When you start, when you start doing, you gotta. I I think that's putting like when, whenever like I hear stories about parents putting like that you gotta on other things, uh, on their kids. I think that's a, like that's a a place of insecurity. Like I think all they want, are for their kids to be secure. And you know what? It, and that's and that's exactly what it, I mean. It's a two way street, you know. That it's that thing of like I want my, you know, I want my kids to enjoy life more than what I did, but don't forget, provide, have a job, yeah, have have some insurance, you know, find a good companion, but also you gotta you gotta it's almost like you gotta prepare your child to know things that you probably didn't even learn, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's plenty of shit. My parents never told me. I figure that shit out as I go. And you got to find the right person who's understanding enough to say, not look at you like, he's a dumbass, but like, he just don't know. Let me help him. You know what I mean? Let me, let, let. 
You gotta have a teammate. Yeah. You got a good teammate. You know, some nights, some nights Shaq was off, some nights Kobe was off, but you know. Yeah. You both can't be off. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're both off, then the baby will leave. It'll just get up and leave. I've seen that a lot of times. The baby will just get up after six months of living and be like, I got to go. <laughs> To leave. I don't know. How, I don't know where they go to. Well, like let me like do like you know what I I this is what I constantly think of, and I think this is what drives me to. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm interviewing Maranzio Vance. He's a comedian, uh, one one of my favorite comedians. Uh, so you should give him a follow at Maranzio Vance on Instagram. He, he's a super dope, dude. Like one thing that drives me to like to do what I do is because I feel like at any moment this can all end. Like. Uh, like, uh, I, I don't want to, like, have any regret, regrets with life. So I, with that mindset, I constantly think of, like, what if something happens to me? What if something happens to, to my fiancé? Like, I it, suffer from death anxiety, so oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. I'm sorry, babe. I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> he, you already, you already fucking up. Every time I, uh, yeah, I know I'm fucking up. Uh, every time I let him in, he, he just want, he runs away. Yeah. You want to let him in? How many months pregnant is she? She is, she's 18 weeks. I don't know what that means. What is that? Oh, like four and a half, five, five. I'm not good at math. What the fuck we doing? I'm Asian, so I, I should know. And you like calculating, fail. oh, 18 months. You know what that is, don't you? No, yeah. I don't. Come on, get in here. So she's three months. Uh, no, she's like she, she, uh, she, she November, October, uh, November, December, January, February. She's like four months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with your yeah. anxiety, um, I tell my I don't tell my children this. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm be open and honest. Of course, I'm, I I won't do that. I, when, I don't tell my kids. I don't tell my kids this, but like, there's a part of me that. Thanks. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't think before I became a parent. I just did it. Yeah. Wasn't planned. We didn't sit down. We didn't talk about it. It just happened. Yeah. And then you don't think into you don't take into consideration. You know, I created a person who's going to have to go through everything that I don't want to go through. Yeah. Do I want to put somebody through that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think about that a lot. Like I think about the fact that there's days I don't want to get up. There's days I can't sleep. There's days I want to sleep all day. There's days where all I can do is sleep. I have days where I can't think of a joke. I have days where I can't think of a sketch to write or a comic strip or an animated idea like I just can't think of it because I think about money and do I have a savings and do I have insurance and I'm black do I have good health high cholesterol you know yeah. I same things too every day do right. I have a license with me I gotta make sure I got my license and my ID and I'm driving my hands on 10 and 2 like I think about everything and because and also, like that adds to stress, and on top of that, you know, like it's like what you said, being the profession that we are in, you're dealing with the anxieties of fucking doing auditions, like writing new shit, like trying, like what, where, where's your next gig coming from? So, like my manager, my manager emailed me every day. I got an audition for you. I got an audition for you. I got an audition for you. And a part of me is like, why the fuck are we trying to? Why are we trying to make TV shows? in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Like, I get it. Like, we're artists, and we're supposed to reflect the time period in which we're in. But it's like, at what point do we just say, let's just take a break and like, figure out what's going on? Group reset. Let's Re reset. We haven't reset. We haven't taken time to reset. We don't know how to stop. Yeah. Partly because of capitalism within itself. Oh, no, I agree. I agree with that. Like I'll be honest, dude. When when the pandemic first hit and everything shut down, 
my first instinct was like good <laughs> like uh i've enjoyed this yeah no same here i got it, it's been good for me this whole pandemic um like it's sorry i lost my train my, my fiance is knocking on the wall uh she's taking shit up yeah t yeah t shut up. um but basically i i felt like i felt like prior to the pandemic i was already on the verge of like like because I feel like society, you rely on other people f for your source of income. Mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like, even though you're playing it safe, like say I, I decided to go work at a banking job, you're still relying on income. So, and that's the scary part. And, and then, so, and then what happens when that source of income gets taken away from you, your safety, your foundation, and that's how I, like, and then when I saw all these like stand-up comedians like all these entertainers get all their gigs pulled from underneath them. Like my whole mindset was like, where's your foundation? Like, what have you been doing to build yourself up? I feel like a lot of people, a lot of entertainers, they go into the rat race. Like, hey, I need to do this. I need to do that. And forget to build their own foundation. Uh, the reason I bring that up. Or, or, is just started... a thing of, or it's just a thing of like, <clears throat> you make money. You made bad decisions. Now you got to go work to make up for the bad decisions you made, right? Like Will Smith, when he first started, he said he bought like 10, 11 different cars. He was like, that was dumb. Yeah. You know, because you can't drive with one car. And he was broke for a minute. Yeah. Like, he was broke for a second. Then he was like, I got smarter. Some people, some celebrities work because they don't know how not to work. Some people work because they're in demand. Uh, some people contractually obligated to work. Um, it's just weird for our profession, you know what I mean? Because finding out, looking at how the pandemic affects everybody, you're expendable. Yeah. Our profession, yeah. to a degree, listen, entertainment is a luxury. At the end of the day, as great as we are at what we do and telling jokes, and writing and performing, that shit is a luxury. That's like getting cheese on something because you got some extra change in your pocket. And you're like, yo, you got some extra money. Let's go see a comedy show. You got to be able to afford that comedy show. And if people can't afford to come see you, you don't have a job. Yeah. So, and that's where we are. Like, in the industry that we're in right now, I don't know how they're going to recover. They don't have a plan. They show on fucking movies on HBO and HBO Max. They're supposed to be in the theaters because they don't have a plan. And at the same time, speaking of the HBO Max thing, these directors are getting pissed off because they were they were expecting like the money. They were relying on the gatekeeper, the HBO, mm -hmm. to to be like, it's like okay, our money's gonna come in on the back end once we release this movie in theaters. And then HBO was just like, no, fuck that. We're just gonna release it on our app. And now these like directors are like, what well, what the fuck about us? Like. We're, we're losing all this money. So like, that money like, that they're supposed to get to theaters is gone. It's gone. Yeah. So yeah. no, let me, let me, let me ask you this. Like, uh, I feel when it comes to the entertainment industry, I feel probably about 95% of the entertainers out there are not doing what they truly want to do in the industry. I think they, they, they're they're working adjacent to their dreams like it's like hey, i look at tracy morgan like tracy morgan got a commercial right now yeah where he does some mortgage commercial rocket mortgage or some stuff some shit like that do i think tracy morgan woke up and said i want to be a goofy ass motherfucking everything i do what was that am i talking to <laughs> everything i do is going You with me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're, you're you're kind of cutting. I got I got clips of your uh, Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Morgan. Well, it's just like Tracy Morgan is like stuck playing the same guy. Like he'll never be taken serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even if he wanted to do something else, he can't do it because society is not going to allow him. Do the the be in that box. Jay-Z said it. Jay-Z was like, Jay-Z said in a song, I want to rap like 
Talib Kweli, yeah. but no one's gonna buy my music if I rap like Talib Kweli. Yeah, like I want to be, I want to be conscious and woke and be brave and say controversial things, but nobody wants to hear me talk like that. That's that's not gonna make money, and that's what it comes down to. It's 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 like what uh, Charles Gambino said: people see you how they want to see you. So you, it's up to you to make them see you in a different way. Mm -hmm. So. How long are you gonna be up doing this? Cause your girlfriend, your your wife, or fiance is gonna come in and kick in your forehead. She she stopped uh, she stopped uh, knocking. So I think I'm good for for the next five minutes. You got a cat too? <laughs> got a cat and a dog. Yeah. Somebody got, got a dog. The, the cat. <laughs> that, that's my first instinct. But now she loves the cat. Like it, 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 it's funny. We got a fat dog. We got a fat cat. And like I'm fat too. So like. How can you? What, what do you use it? I know if you give a dog chocolate, it could kill him. Yeah. What can you give a cat? I don't know. Like I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm not saying we killed the cat. I'm just saying, what do we need to give <laughs> a cat for a cat not to be a cat that's living? <laughs> I don't know. Like, but like my fiance Samantha loves the cat, so. I know, but accidents happen. <laughs> I don't Make sure she doesn't change the litter box. I can see that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've been taking care of that little box, Cynthia. Yeah. No, let 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 it let it go let it go bad for like a week, and that that ammonia, that cat piss ammonia. Oh my god. I mean, man, that's that, that's in my fucking studio or in my yeah. office, sir. The cat, the little box. Yeah, because we we can't like because uh, it upsets her because uh, you know she's pregnant, so like I I have to put it in here, and. So like I have to deal with it. So man, I wonder what would happen if you left your door open one day for like ten minutes and told your dog just sit here with me and see where the cat go. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Don't do that because then your wife is like, <laughs> "You can't even keep up with the cat. How are we gonna have a baby? Oh my god!" You know, it, it's kind of crazy already. Like. uh like it, as much as I'm trying to pursue this comedy thing, dude, I, I and I texted you a couple times before about this, but like before the pandemic hit, I, like I, I was getting burnt out on comedy. Like mm -hmm. I felt because you know, like when you start out, it's like it's like you, know, you start out as open micer, like it's just like oh I can't wait till I get on the show. Like once I like once I get on the show, like once I'm a host, like things will get better. And then you start hosting, and then you're like, "Oh, I, I, things will get better once I'm once I'm on the road making money, uh, like doing comedy." And then like I found myself getting gigs on the road, and like I was fucking hating life. Like I was performing for people in random you a, places. You was a whore because you was performing for money. Yeah, and you felt dirty after the performance because you wasn't performing because you're like, I really enjoyed it. It's like, let me just go perform so I can get this money and go the fuck home. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you like, felt dirty. Uh, I felt I felt like I wasn't being honest with myself. So yeah, dirty. Like, okay, uh, be, be honest with yourself like this. Here's, your, here's, here's a suggestion. You know Mike Babiglia? Yeah. I love Mike Babiglia. I mean, I love Mike Babiglia. Like, I like everything Mike Babiglia do. Up and everything, including his fucking Peyton Manning size head he had. <laughs> but you're on a journey right now. Yeah. Your material is your journey that you're on. That's your journey right now. That's your truth is I moved here. I'm about to have a kid. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have a kid. I'm barely taking care of myself. Like, whatever your story is, yeah. write the story out, right? And then read the story and find out where the jokes are, where you can implement them into the story. Okay. Like, like take 40 things about your journey. Write down 40 things of, like, I got a girl. She's black. I'm Asian. We live in Seattle. Uh, I'm a comedian. She's an actress. It's our first kid. You know, write down everything about your life or write down everything about a story that you want to tell and then find a joke for each thing that you want to talk about. Isn't that like kind of like the Christopher Titus method? 
Yeah. He told yeah. the shit. He told the shit to me. Really? I met him. I, I had worked with him and I featured for him a couple of times. And then I'm a storyteller and he liked the fact that I tell the stories too, but not the way he tells them. And I forgot how we got in the conversation, but he told me the formula. He like, this is what you do. And then did it. That's your life though. You know what I mean? So just take, when I see comments coming up with shit, I'm like, you did none of that last week. You didn't yeah. go there last week. You didn't do this last week. You've never been to this place before. Like, you can tell when someone's just telling a joke just to get a laugh. Yeah. He's like, are you, are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? Yeah. I watched I watch the uh, extras no, a lot. I, I, dude, no, you're absolutely right, dude. Because I, 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 I don't know if I told you this, but for me, like, for for comedy, I, the the best comedy that I consume that I that I uh, am attracted to, is like authenticity and vulnerability, and like what you said about like it's like yeah you didn't do that last week that type of thing like it's like it's it, it's not who you are as a person I, and I can see through that shit and I think that's why a lot of times I get discouraged with uh with comedy because it's like dude like I just don't see a lot of good comedy out there. Or maybe so this I'm is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Advice from me, advice to you, advice to you given to me from Patrice O'Neill. I was in Fort Lauderdale, the Fort Lauderdale Improv. And it was, I think this is my second time working with Patrice. And he came up to me, he was like, what are you doing? I was like, what are you talking about? What are you doing? On stage, what are you doing? I was like, I'm telling jokes. What's all this? And he started mimicking my act. He said, dude, stop being in love with your genius. Like, stop being in love with the fact that you you, you think you top shit because you can come up with a clever joke. Just tell the fucking story. Hmm. Be honest and just tell the story. And that's what I've been doing since he gave me this advice in 2010 and I've been doing it ever since 2010 because as much as it is about me entertaining somebody I need to enjoy what I'm talking about yeah you know I don't want to just be on stage that I can write a joke that's not a problem figuring out a premise the setup and a punchline that's baby food. Yeah. But to take people on a journey and they follow you and they find the laugh in it, they find the honesty in it, they find the stuff that they connect to and they enjoy it. And they're like, oh my God, I get it. Oh, I've been there. Oh, like you want people to relate to you. Yeah. When you're done. Laughs are fast food. Jokes are fast food. Can they do they remember you? Yeah. Fuck That's a catchphrase. Good. Catchphrases are people that want to make residual income off the fact that they came up with something fucking chunty and shitty real quick. And like, oh blah 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, I have to say you do. Huh? And then here it is on my shirt, so you want to buy it. What's that? No, I'm just saying like oh, put the like, catchphrase on the shirt. I felt bad. I was like, damn, you got a catchphrase on your shirt. Um, yeah, I want you to have fun. Thank you. Fuck other comics. Like, don't worry about what other comics are doing. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. If you worry about what other comics are doing, then you're not focused on yourself. Yeah. Because if you That's worried about you and focus on you, you don't have time to see what somebody else is doing. And look here, not to be mean, if everybody is going right just go away there's no go left go up go down just go away from whatever everybody's doing and just do you because if everybody when hollywood sends out the breakdowns we're looking for a kevin hart type it's like why the fuck don't you just go get kevin hart stop 
why would you go and get somebody to look like somebody that already exists to do something that the motherfucker that you want to do probably wouldn't even do? So this is a shitty project that this person wouldn't do. So you want a shittier version of the person that you can't get to play this role. Yeah. And I think half the time, I don't think like these casting agents really know what they want until it nobody happens. does. Yeah. Nobody does until the right person calls and say, I need my client in it. This is a connection. It's a six degrees of separation. Like, you can't do anything about it. So when, see, you, when, when you leave in Hollywood? <laughs> I probably left like two years ago, mentally. I, I Yeah, no, I, I, I can sense that. I mentally. Because I get auditions for shit all the time. But it's nothing you want to do. It's nothing I give a fuck about. Exactly, this, exactly. I've, I've booked stuff and been on the set and was not there because I was just like, yeah. it's a numbers game because my manager and agent don't give a fuck if I don't care about this project that I'm doing. They care about the money that I make from this project because at the end of the day, I'm a product. Yeah. yeah. I'm a product. Yep. And if you can't book nothing, if you can't sell nothing, bye-bye. They don't want, they don't want to be your friend. Your manager's not your friend. Your agent is not your friend. Your publicist is not your friend. Nobody's your friend. Yeah. Nobody's your friend if they depend on you to put money in their pocket. Yeah. You are a product. You're a horse in a race. And what good is a horse with only three legs? You put it down, you make glue, and you tell them to stick stick together. You know, you know it's funny. Like, uh, like you're you're one of the comedians that like like saved me x amount of years off my career like uh, there, there's a few like uh there's a few comedians that i see like them like like in my mind it's like oh i want to be where they're at that i actually understand where they're at and i'm like oh i don't want to i want to avoid that so like not not saying i don't want your career but i think mentally as far as the way you think i feel i, I feel that i feel the same way that you do and like it just makes me like want to go a different route like, the people, the people who help me, the way you see the way, the way you see me, Patrice, Tony Rock, he's been laughs. Tony Rock, yeah, yeah, Tony Rock, Tony Rock, Patrice O'Neill, Cat Williams, surprisingly. Um, Rodney Perry. Um, it was a comedian named Bob Marley. White okay. guy named Bob Marley. He lives in Maine, but he was huge. Like in the early, late nineties, early two thousands. Like Bob Marley was the dude. He was getting development deals. He was on Letterman all the time. CBS wanted him. Like he was just a funny dude, smart. But he had pulled me to the side at Montreal in 2006 and he was like, gave me advice and just told me, you're funny, do this, blah, blah, blah. Like, he just gave me life advice. It's rare you get life advice from somebody. If somebody give you advice, that person cares about you enough to say, look, I don't know you and I don't have a horse in this race. But if I can tell you anything that'll make your life not be as shitty as some of the stuff I went through, I'm going to help you out. Yeah. So look, yeah. I have to go finish packing because I told you I'm flying to yeah. Charlotte. Um, call me, text me, ask me questions about this whole bringing somebody into the world thing. And Appreciate it, man. I'll tell you how to kill that cat when we get offline. Uh, gotta give it that goddamn cat. That cat got to go. I love pussy, but cats got to go. (laughs) (laughs) Huh? How how early are you flying out? Yeah, look at my ticket again. Dude, it's the paranoia, because I haven't traveled. The paranoia of flying, the paranoia of traveling, the paranoia of, like, going home. Um, I'm going to quarantine for five days when I get home. 
and I'm gonna take those five days to just really sit and just write and read. Like I like to write, man. I really have gravitated more to writing. So I enjoy the writing process. Yeah. I just don't I just don't have the uh, I don't have the uh I don't have the alone time I need. You know what I mean? Cuz I'm always either I'm always working on something or someone's always, you know, tugging at your cape to say, "Hey, you know, we need this. Can you come do this? Can you talk? Can you hang out? Blah blah." I can't drink old fashions anymore, Tito. <laughs> I cannot drink old fashions anymore because I am pre-diabetic and I have high cholesterol because I'm a black man in America and genetically God just hates me. <laughs> so I am drinking uh, carbonated water that's flavored in my mouth and my palate is like, where the fuck is the sugar? And I'm like, ah, we can't have sugar anymore because you'll lose something. Are you sober? Like, do you like smoke or anything or? I haven't. I think I've had whiskey during this pandemic four times. Wow. Four times. But I am a, I don't smoke, never smoked a day in my life. Nice. But I am an edible connoisseur. Okay. Because with my anxiety, there's no way in the world I could maneuver in this life completely sober. Not with the shit I've seen, and not with the shit I've heard, and not the shit I go through. I have to. I did it for, I never did weed or nothing until I turned 38. So I'm 44 now. I never did anything until I turned 38. I walked through life sober like a dumbass. Didn't even know there was stuff out there that could distract me from going crazy. Yeah. Now, like, uh, weed made, like, uh, I, I I think, like, uh, you remember, I don't know if you remember, but, like, I went through that huge manic episode two years ago, and leading up to it was, like, a divorce was, uh, like. The what? Uh, was a divorce. I went through a divorce at that, I was going through a divorce through, for the manic episode two years ago. You've been married before? <laughs> Mike, how old are you? 34. You was, how old are you? When did you get married? I got married when I was uh, 22 to my high school sweetheart. Was it an arranged we, marriage? Was she Asian? Was it some cultural shit? What the fuck is going on? She was Indian. She had a dot in her head like me. No, uh, she, uh, <laughs> no. He, no, like, we, it was just, we literally got married the day before I shipped off to boot camp. So, yeah. You were married? Yeah. You lived a and whole I, I, fucking life. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. So, All so right. I like, so I was going through a bunch of shit, and so, so I was smoking a lot of weed. And then when I got like when I had when when I had my full blown manic episode and got diagnosed with bipolar, uh, turns out that weed didn't help the bipolarness. So since then, I just been yeah. So like I just been sober. Like I haven't I haven't I, like, I haven't drank drank in like seven plus years. So, and then so I've, I've just been free of weed for the last two. Really? Yeah. Well, I am happy for you. Thank you. I have take... not had that same story. My story take... would be a whole lot different. <laughs> Tell your story and you write down jokes in between, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Write the jokes down in between. <laughs> um, take care of yourself. I'll reach out to you tomorrow. Well, I'll reach out to you Sunday when I test down because I'm going to be traveling all day tomorrow. You're fine, man. And I'll hit you up. And, uh, yeah, you got to send me your address. Okay. Um, yeah, just take care of your girl. You know what? Take care of your woman. Make sure that she, she's crazy right now, so you can't make her happy. You cannot. It's, it's impossible. It's emotionally, she's emotionally. Chill. She's pretty chill. Like, uh, just like when, when she's trying to sleep, she's... she's for now. Uh, for now. <laughs> for now. But, for now. But in the meantime, be attentive. Yeah. Just listen. Be supportive. Um, 
I don't know what you got your understandings settings on, but you might need to turn them up a little higher. Yeah. And not take it personal. No, oh, like, I don't think that's one. I don't take anything personal, like or at least like for the most part, with anything. Like I like I like I don't know if I told you this, but like I have like zero expectations from people. Like, that's something I'm learning to have, like uh, just so that like I'm never disappointed. Just have fun. Just just. She comes first and ask her all the time, do you need anything? Are you all right? I'm going to turn this on. Is this going to be loud? Like, just consider it as the cologne you got to wear right now. Your favorite cologne right now is Consider It by Christian Dior. You better spray it on, douse yourself in it. Every day, all day, just be considerate and do what she do if she she drinking water you drinking water if she doing yoga you doing yoga if she want to walk you want to walk if yeah it is what it is you know what i mean rub a freak yeah. three times a day don't take no advice from this dude named mailman too he's the wrong motherfucker to listen to trust me right now That's listen why. to me if he even hit you up later and be like yeah <laughs> no nah, don't block him for sure. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, like, right, I don't want to take care, man. Be safe. And like, like I said, if there's anything you need, if you just need a vent, you know, I'm always there, man. Like, uh, that's yeah, I'm going to get people. that microphone too. What's that? That's like, am I going like 200, 300? A couple hundred. Yeah. I got yeah. fucking two of them. <laughs> oh, you went all out. Dude, I'm telling you, when you, when you go through a manic episode, you fucking spend a lot of money. Fortunately for me, like I fucking, I bought all equipment. Like uh, so, well, I, you did you did the opposite of what most people. So most people go out and buy prostitutes and drugs and a yeah. gun or something. You're like, I'm gonna buy all the audio equipment. I'm gonna show you motherfuckers. I'm gonna record. Yeah, yeah. So and it it, it, it was a great investment and like I have my setup like uh, and that's why I want to work with you so much, man. Like I believe in your vision. I want to fucking like I want to do damage like creatively. Like, Let me tell you what's funny. You're the only person who's ever had a manic breakdown and then like it's good it came after it. Yeah, no, I know. Like, what happened to you, Mike? I fucking bought audio equipment <laughs> and I snapped out of it. Now I'm fully prepared to have my own studio. That's just a crazy depression, but it worked out. It did, so. All right, man, get you some rest. Enjoy your fans. Tell everybody, you know, Keep it up. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. Take it easy. Later. Later. No, that, that was great. That was great. That was a great talk. Oh, how's everyone doing? No, no I'm actually, I'm rubbing. I, I actually, I rubbed my, not to get too personal, but like I rub my fiance's uh, uh, feet like, almost every day. So how you guys doing? No, that was a fucking great talk, man. That was uh, sorry, Facebook. If I was ignoring you for a while, uh, but um, it was uh, he's one of my favorite people. Like we, we like that was the first time like we interacted uh, like through Instagram. Like we've been going back and forth with text messages and shit. But like he, he's one of my favorite comedians, and like I, I I love his I love his point of view. I love his reference uh, frame of reference, and uh, it just inspires me to work hard.